Good morning YouTube, it is I, Team Impact JT here, and I'm doing a deck profile that was requested by one of my friends. Uh, this past weekend, I went to two locals, I went undefeated with Constellars, and I'm going to show off my build. Of course, this isn't the final version, but I'm going to show it off anyways, and yeah. So, I beat decks like Prophecy, Malefic Drain, and uh, some other stuff. Heretics, that kind of stuff. So, here's the build that I used both days, and yeah. First, we got triple Constellar Pollux. What you guys don't, you guys don't know, when it's successfully in normal summoned, you can normal summon an extra Constellar monster this turn. The thing about this card is it can't be Valored because its effect is actually a continuous condition. It can't be Valored, Fiendish Chained, Breakthrough Skilled, or Light and Prisoned. And the only way to negate its effect is if you have skill drain already on the field before it's normal summon. So, very good card. Staple at three in the deck. I play three algae, or algity, don't know how to pronounce it. Some players like to use two. I myself like to use three to get out my exceeds ASAP. It's a really good card. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a constellar monster from your hand. Unlike Pollux, it can be Valor, Phoenix Chain, Light and Prison Mirror, and Breakthrough Skilled. So, there you go. Next up is the Heart of the Deck, 3 Constellar Costs. Uh, what this card does is once per turn, or no, actually twice per turn, you can increase the level of one Constellar monster on your side of the field by one. So you can, or de decrease its level. So you can go into rank 5s and rank 3s if you play them. Very good card, and it's searchable with Fire Formation 10 key, so. Yes. Next up, we got Constellar Sombre, three of them. The first effect, which isn't really relevant, is, is, if this card, while this card is in the graveyard, if it was sent there this turn, you can normal summon one Constellar monster for one less tribute. That effect isn't really useful for me. What I like is the second ability. The second ability is you can banish one Constellar monster from your graveyard, then target one Constellar monster in your graveyard. Add that target to your hand. Also, this card gains the following effect. This turn, you can activate this effect. Normal summon one Constellar monster. So it's a double summon that retrieves something from the graveyard. Next up, we have two Constellar Sheraton. I don't see a lot of people playing two of these, but I like them because they search out your Constellar Sombre. Constellar Costs, Algidy, and Pollux if you need it. Very good card. If It really should have been level 4, but I suppose that would be too overpowered for this deck. It also has a nice defense of 1900. Not that you'll be putting it in defense a lot, but still overall a very good card. That's it for the Constellar Monsters. Up next we got 2 Effect Veiler just to negate stuff. Like Tour Guide and stuff like that. I don't know what else you'd negate. I guess you could negate freaking Ophion. And yeah. Next up, I'm taking a Thunder King Ryo. As you know, I went, went to one on the ban list. Uh, it's a pretty good card. Locks down your opponent from searching, and it can negate an Inherent Summon. It's a 1900 beer, and it's light, which goes well with this next card, Honest. I don't think I have to explain why I play this card. But I will anyways, everything is pretty much light, you know, that sort of stuff. Our last monster is Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear. I mainly use this for destruction and to get tankies out on the field, so I can search out my costs easier. It's pretty good. Alright, we got spells. Triple MST. Don't really need to explain that one. Double Lance to protect my Constellars. Double Duality to dig in to my deck and get vital cards out. Double Tanky to search out costs or bear if necessary. Rhoda to search out Pollux. And finally Dark Hole because I just like it and I think it's still staple. Next up, we got traps, double trap stun, to also protect my constellars and whatnot. 
Double Fiendish Chain. This card I personally use because on the off chance that your opponent XYZ summons, Tribute summons, or Synchro summons with the monster you chained, this card will remain on the field and can bounce it back with Pleiades and get another use out of it next turn. Double D Prison. I just like removing my opponent's threats, like Light Pulsar, that kind of stuff. And now the 1 ofs. Saw Morning, Compulse, Torrential, and Bottomless. Just basically normal summon disruptors and whatnot. So that does it for the main deck. We're going to go into the extra deck, which is pretty standard. Um, you got your Constellar Ptolemy M7, which is now down to 1. You can overlay a Constellar monster with it. So that's always nice. Constellar Pleiades. And I'm going to be honest. I play two of these and I really like the card. In fact, a neat little trick is you can activate a, n a normal spell or trap card, gain its effect, and chain play these effect to bounce into your hand. The effect will still go through and you get that card to reuse for later. So, that's always nice. Also works with quick plays like Lance and MST. So, yeah. Double Omega. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one material. For the rest of this turn, all Constellar Monsters currently on the field are unaffected by the effects of Spell and Trap cards. Really nice, you can play some neat tricks with Dark Hole and Torrential on it, and yeah. Next up we got one Constellar Precipe, I don't know how you pronounce its name. What this card does is once per turn during your damage step of either player's turn, when a Constellar Monster you control is attacking or being attacked, you can detach one XYZ material from this card, that monster gains 1,000 attack until the end phase, so, yeah. Well, that's it for the Constellar monsters in the extra deck. Up next, we have one Evil Swarm Ouroboros, because Shockmaster is banned, and, you know, because I do use this, I might actually side Eradicator in for Spellbooks and Chain Burn and that, those kind of annoying decks, so, yeah. Starly's Pella Dynamo, I guess. Gaga Gaga Cowboy, because cowboying for game is awesome when your opponent is down to 800 or less. Maze Stroke. Shark Fortress, because ring fires are easy to make in this deck. A Tyrus. An Adrius. And my favorite combo. 61 Volcasaurus and Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger. Basically what I do is I use Volcasaurus to blow up the opponent's side of the, the opponent's monster and inflict damage if they're wide open. And I'll just overlay for Gaia Dragon and directly attack, so that's always nice. I'm not going to show off my side deck because it varies depending on the card store I play at, so yeah. That's pretty much the main deck, people. I'm sorry I sound a little groggy, but it's like 7 in the morning and I just woke up, so... Like, comment, subscribe, and I might actually get a Hanzo tin that's sitting at Barnes & Noble. Yeah, I might buy a Hanzo tin because Super Maxis are like 10 bucks, and getting more of those is always nice. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. There will be more videos for you in the future. Sorry I haven't done a video in a while, but I didn't really have anything to do a video on. and I didn't really want to talk about the ban list because it's just hard to get my thoughts on camera. So... Yeah, see you later.